this video we're going to talk about four things to be aware of when using the ZV E10. Hey everybody, this is Dave. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about the Sony ZV E10. Of course, the camera has automatic, manual, aperture priority, shutter priority, and bulb mode. Also has several different picture profiles, white balance. Has anything I can any I could really think of for any camera, including a uh, you know special effects menu, which I went through. In another video, I went through each mode, but right now I'm just going to talk about the things that I had a lot of trouble with, and I'll just get one out of the way that I see most people complain about for this camera. That's the battery life. I haven't seen too many problems. Maybe if you're constantly running video for hours on end, and then you would wipe it out quickly, but going out to shoot photos, talking about still photography, um, you know, if I take it out for a day, I don't have any problem. Uh, biggest problem, one of the biggest problems is uh, the kit lens it comes with. The camera struggles in low light situations and the only way to get around that is just immediately get a new lens. Get something that's wider, better, it's going to let more light onto your sensor than the lens that it came with. Had I known that first I would have opted to get the camera uh, without a lens and another thing I did was eventually was instead of uh, you know investing heavily into other Sony lenses I just got an adapter for Nikon and you could do that with Nikon or Canon as well. An adapter so I can use all my existing lenses with this camera. Uh, the next thing I've seen a lot of trouble with is the menu system. There's 11 pages of information to go scroll through, get your settings together. Seems like a lot. Probably a lot of things are not necessary. A lot of things are, you know, effects that you would use on Instagram that are built into uh, apps like that and social media settings. Uh, just look at that. There's a way to keep everything separate and you can have your own menu and keep settings and pre-program things and that's probably the way to go to avoid scrolling through 11 pages of menu options. Last thing I really really dislike um, is the the control dial. I'm going to turn this on so I can remember which is which. Oh yeah there we go. So if I spin this around it's controlling my shutter speed. Control dial is also sharing space with your ISO exposure compensation display modes and your timer so what i find myself doing while i'm scrolling through this right now i'm in a controlled situation so if i'm out in the in the field and i'm quickly doing this i'm accidentally hitting like the iso so iso came up well i didn't really want it to come up so now i have to stop what i'm doing hit okay and go back so i really just dislike that mode or that dial, you know, for manual mode. So what I do is I find myself using it in mostly automatic situations for photography. So not been the greatest. Battery life, struggles in low light, menu system, and the control dial. Just all things to be aware of when you're using this camera. I don't know if this is typical of Sony's. I don't own any other Sony cameras. Got this mostly mostly for video, and it's been great. It's been a great vlogging camera. You know, the, the talking headshot is really what it's been great for. If you're getting into this camera, you'll want to be aware of those few things. 